always great to talk to you. Jenny, it's always great to talk with you. Thank you. An unsealed indictment shows that the three suspects in the murder of Border Patrol agent Brian Terry were deported from the U.S. three times the year before this happened. Are you surprised to hear that? I'm, I'm not surprised. I'm disgusted. And, and this is the, the culture that we as a country have allowed, that uh, President Obama, Janet Napolitano, Eric Holder are more interested in suing our state of Arizona and undermining the rule of law, making the good guys, us law enforcement officers, to be the villains rather than enforce a law on criminal illegals from other countries that clearly these murderers who murdered or were co-conspirators in the murder of Agent Terry. And it, it shouldn't be a surprise to us, but it, it just further turns my stomach that these people three times were in the country and they were uh, simply released and they should have been prosecuted, formally deported. They come back, heavy hand of, of enforcement and discipline brought upon them. But that's not the case. 70 out of 500 or 600 a day are prosecuted here in Tucson uh, sector in Arizona. So when you prosecute only 15 percent of those who break the law, yet in America, if our own citizens break the law, they have to either have a plea bargain or go to a, a trial and everything's upside down, and this is what's so outrageous. And one of our heroes in the Border Patrol lost his life because of this. Really, and you look at the criminal background check of this guy, this one they have in custody. He has a criminal record in Maricopa County. He, he pleaded guilty to aggravated assault in 2006. He was arrested by the Border Patrol on June 8, 2010, near Nogales. And I know we talked to you about this whole issue of these guys being what you called VR, voluntary returns. Right. Tell us about it. Well, that's what's happening is the VR, voluntary return, is that's the formal uh, title of catch and release. Catch and release is a slang that we all uh, know about that literally there is no punishment, there is no consequence for breaking the law if you're from another country. And that's completely unacceptable that, that we continue to create this culture that really is an incentive to break our laws. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. And that's what's so outrageous about this. And, and I'm tired of being uh, shouted down and called names from our own leaders in our government in Washington, from uh, Eric Holder and Janet Napolitano and, and our own president, to s somehow make or, or say we're being un-American because we want to enforce the law, and then they make it about race, color, national origin. It has nothing to do with that. It's about enforcing the law. It's about protecting America and securing our borders. That's what this is about. And we're not, we're not going to sit down and shut up as they'd like us to do. We're going to stand up and, and demand that this border is secure, demand that the laws are enforced against people who break the laws. Now, I know Homeland Security Secretary Janet Napolitano, she talked about, you know, Agent Brian Terry and his crew were targeting what's called these rib crews that basically rob and assault the drug runners and the illegal immigrants. And I know the last time we were out there talking with your deputies, they've been dealing with this. They said it was their newest adversary. Well, just a few weeks ago, we had a shootout here in western Pinell County, 15 drug smugglers carrying backpacks and a rip crew, which are bandits, also uh, foreign-born criminals that are up here in America mm -hmm. stealing from the cartels or preying upon the illegals as they come across at gunpoint. So they had a gunfight. One guy's killed. Another guy's shot in the gut. We arrested six of the illegals. This, this happened 70-plus miles north of the border in the United States. So how is the border more secure than ever before? It's absurd. Yeah, and she admits this is going on, and then she says, and she stands there, hey, it's, I know this area, and I know it's the, be it's, it's the best it's ever been. Yeah, and she doesn't know what she's talking about. Yeah. Have you heard about this switching gears a little bit, this donations to build the fence? Oh, I did. Uh, Steve Smith, who's, right. uh, in fact, our state senator here in Pinell County, it, he's a great leader, and he, again, is trying to show that the emperor has no clothes out in Washington that it, that's the way we, we feel at times, like literally we're the ones that are the truth tellers, and these people are like, oh, shh, be quiet, you know, don't, don't criticize uh, Obama. And we have to, again, take matters into our own hands because of the failures 
uh, you know, a core enumerated responsibility of the federal government is to protect America, to protect our people, to protect this country, and yet they try to get into every other aspect of our lives, from owning the banks to the insurance companies to Obamacare and, you know, the auto industry. And this is their core role. And, and yet, so Steve Smith offered this bill to accept donations and to build this fence ourselves, to use inmate labor here in our prisons and to say at 50 cents an hour, we're going to build this we're going to build this jail, and that's what we're going to we're going to build this fence, the double barrier fence along our border. And uh, we're, forget the federal government; they, they should yeah. be doing this, but they haven't. And I think that's what he's saying. I mean, this is an ambitious idea, no doubt. He's asking for donations. You know, Governor Brewer has signed off on the legislation, and they they know. I mean, the sooner they get this started, like you said, the sooner the better. Um, but it, it just, it's just proof uh, that they're reaching for anything they can, you guys out there, to try to make a difference in what's going on on that border. I know. Well, I've, it, 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 I'm a combat engineer, branch qualified as an Army officer. I'm now retired, but I helped build double barrier fence out north of Tijuana, south of San Diego in California, and it works. Napolitano, would, we built a 14-foot corrugated steel no-climb fence, which means you can't put your fingers or feet into it. And Napolitano would say, well, all you need is a 15-foot ladder, and you can cross over the fence. And she thinks she's won the argument. And she doesn't have a, a, a freaking clue about what she's talking about, because what we did is we built surveillance, cameras, infrared at night, lighting, and also sensors. And then this novel concept, which she fails to do still to this day, is enforce the law. Mm -hmm. Anybody who crossed over the border, at least there and in the Yuma sector, and this happened under President Bush, we enforced the law and they were prosecuted. And when we did that, 96 percent reduction in illegal entries in the Yuma sector. So it works. And when it, turn, you know, when it comes to turning your guys over to the feds, uh, prosecution's not high at all? No, right now, still, right now, as we're talking today, Jenny, that only 70 yeah. are prosecuted, 70 yeah. a day. And this is where they keep claiming that they don't have the resources to do it. So I asked Randy Hill, who's the chief of the Tucson sector of the Border Patrol, and he says uh, 70 is in response to my answer. And I said, well, I said, Randy, how many are apprehended per day? And he says 500. 600. Yeah. So we're only enforcing the law, and 15 percent of the people will break the law. Sad. How is that right? Yeah, sad commentary. Have you talked to Senator Smith about what he wants to do? Oh, yeah. yeah. Senator Smith and I are great partners in the fight to secure the border. Uh, we've talked at length about it, and he's, he's a terrific leader. This is where we need more patriots to stand up and fight for America that we got to take this government back and, and stop these people, literally, who go around the globe apologizing for America, apologizing like everything's our fault. The guns that go into Mexico, oh, they're our fault. This is what Obama's saying. Yeah. You know, yeah. we got to stop that and stand up for our rights in America. We've got to, here we're in two wars, Iraq and Afghanistan, eight years, nine years, we're approaching a decade Obama led us all to believe that he would be getting us out of those wars. He's now in his third year in office, and then he starts bombing Libya. What yeah. the heck are we doing? Well, it'll we be should interesting. be protecting our country. Yeah, we got to call into the senator's office. We're going to talk to him, but uh, you think it's a good idea, and it'll be interesting to see. As you said, we need patriots to come forward, and we'll see what happens. It's going to be interesting once they get this website set up. Right on. No, I'm very supportive of it, and it's a shame that our federal government doesn't secure the border. Uh, but we're going to continue to pull the curtain back and say, look at look at all this scandalous uh, stuff. They're not doing their job that they're supposed to do in the Constitution yet, but they won't. They won't enforce the law. They're, in fact, suing Arizona at a time we need help while we're trying to enforce the law. Yep. And by the way, that's our job to enforce the law.